Hey there, welcome back uh, to another video. Today we're going to redo one. I've done it before, a version of it. Uh, this one's a little different. This is a seven pin winch switch. So it's uh, basically designed for operating winch in your truck, ATV, etc. It is both 12 volt and 24 volt. It, under 12 volt, you get 20 amps. Under 24 volt, it's 10 amps, both direct current. It has seven pins on it, um, your ground, your load one, your power and LED power, and your load two. Um, while it's designed for winches, or sorry, marketed for winches, it can be used for other things as well. So if you want to have one set of lights on and then off and then the other set of lights on, you can use one switch to do both, but the lights will be on at different times or fans or whatever, whatever you want to use it for. Uh, load is a load to these things they don't care if you're using it for a winch or if you're using it for lights so it's relatively easy to wire up um, just a couple jumpers you have to put in place but if you're looking at it and you're not super initiated into it it can be daunting there's a lot of posts there right so um, but it's really easy and we'll get into it here pretty quick and um, you want to be careful when you hook these things up not to separate this part here which is what happens if you start messing around with these little clips on the ends here if you pull them out the bottom part of the switch will come off and inside are three a little o-ring that sits on the post the actual toggle for the switch itself and then two rockers that are underneath everything and the rockers are what actually makes the contact to the post when the, the switch is connected and if it falls apart on you and you're not ready for it it can be a little bit interesting to put it back together uh, if that does happen you can shoot me a message and i'll give you some pictures or what how to put it back together um, yeah so without much further ado let's get right into it and start the wiring process back in a minute Okay, so first of all, you're going to need some short lengths of wire. I've color coded these to go along with the inset picture that you'll see so that you can easily see which posts go where and it's easy for you. You'll need three small jumpers and four wires. Obviously, you'll need your ground and then two load wires. I've already tinned these, so they're ready to go uh, to fit into the connectors, which you will also need. You'll need either the ones with the rubber boots on them or if you got them in bulk you can do that route too either or uh, and some heat shrink of course for this application i will actually be using these clips i don't like them normally as i've said before but for some applications they are good um, this particular application where we're doing jumpers from one to the other this makes it easier. Um, you also have the wires tinned together and then we will actually solder the connections together before they go into the jumper, before they go into the connector, sorry, the clips. And that will make sure that they're not gonna fall apart or wiggle or create uh, any sort of a gap, uh, as you know with electricity, if you have any sort of a gap where the electricity has to go across it, that starts to create heat, heat leads to fire. So um, I've seen these in some applications where people have done that and they've melted in the dash completely. I've also seen them where they've tried to run too much power through them and they've melted. It says 20 amps, but I don't think I would go anywhere near that. I would almost always especially in a winch situation or whatnot i would run the switch just as a trigger wire or a trigger to uh, a relay of sorts so um, your standard relay or if the winch comes with one and you'd have to check with the manufacturer and see what's in your kit but i don't think i would ever trust these switches or pretty much any switch unless it's heavy duty for running large loads through it um, the relays in that are cheap, they're easy to hook up and they save you a lot. So uh, I would go that route. So we'll get right into this and take it from there. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna use my handy dandy doohickey here to hold the wires together because this one can be, these can be uh, tricky to get without that. So put a little solder on the tip, get the crease of surface area there a bit. There 
got it. So that's on there, soldered together for the wire. Um, as with anything, you want to make sure that your wires are even, so trim off any excess that you might have going on there. These alligator clips work excellent as a heat sink if you're working in areas where you require such a thing. <clears throat> now get your wire inside the clip, again with the post from the pliers on the back, away facing away from the crack that is in there, and a small what you call it? A little pressure, and you're done. Okay. Now, again, we'll need another one for this side. <clears throat> so, check and see how much is going to go through. If it's too much, then you can always trim a bit off. Pop that one in there, as like the other one. Move it away, so you're not going to cut the other one while you're doing it. And a little pressure again. You're good to go. <clears throat> Now we will take and put the heat shrink in place. There's a couple different ways you can do this. You can either do it on the switch itself or beforehand. Um, like I've said in the past, you want to have your heat shrink overlapping just a little bit over the ends of the clip, but just a little bit over because when you heat it up, it will shrink a little bit. If it does end up going a little bit too far over and you think you're going to have problems getting it onto the uh, posts of the switch itself, you want to just kind of trim it off a little bit. You don't need to take much off of these things. They will connect fairly well. The, some of the heat shrink will pull out. So clean it up a little bit. Don't pull. It's like a hangnail. If you pull on it, you'll unravel it all the way down. So anyway, there you go. And that one's ready to go on. So. For this one, we have our ground, load one, and then the power. The power from the battery is gonna go on the right-hand side of the switch, and the jumper will go over to the left-hand side of the switch. Um, if you're putting them on and you do, it's too hard to push in, just take a little screwdriver, a little flat screwdriver, and just kind of pry those up just a little bit, like right there. You can pry it up a little bit and that will give you enough clearance to go onto the switch. If you pry it up too much, then of course you just take your needle nose pliers or little pliers and give it a little, just a little bit of a squeeze and she'll go on easy again. So for this one, like I said, we have the ground here. This is the power in from your battery to power the switch or through your ignition, however you have it wired. And the jumper goes over to this other post. Your ground is going to go on here, your load two, load one, and I'm going to do those in fast motion so as not to waste your time. We'll be back in a minute. Okay, so that's out of the way. Now, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the ground wire on so we can all see what we're talking orientation-wise, and then we'll do the loads. Because this is your battery coming in and your ground coming in, I like to put the load wires, the long wire on the opposite side. So um, put your clip on it a bit and perhaps you can hold. So get your clip on there and Give her a push. If it doesn't go, you can, like I said, you can pry those things open or you can use a set of pliers. Now, same with this one. You can get it started on there. These little jumper ones can be problematic sometimes. So you can take it, if you grip right here at the end of the plastic, but before the main part of the spade clip itself, that's your safest spot. So you're not going to actually 
crimp it shut and you're not going to bend it over by grabbing it on the plastic. So right at that little joint in between the two, medium pressure, nothing too extreme. Um, and she should go right on. And the same with these ones. So. And you want to leave them up a little bit, sorry, depending on the length of your jumpers. Uh, they can be a problem if the jumpers are too short. They might look nice and tight in place, but you don't have enough to actually get it onto the post. So anyway, there is that. And now for the fun part, we'll do the testing. So we'll strip off a little bit here. a handy 12 volt power source. We will connect our grounds to there. We will connect our battery up in a second and to these venti tester I built for just such applications. Careful not to crush your grounds and all that. And now for the main battery part. If everything is working right in the middle position, you should have nothing, no LED on, no lights on here. You push it down, that's the winch out. Your what, number two comes on, flip it all the way to the top, number one comes on, light still on, back to your off position again. So that is essentially how to wire up a seven pin winch switch. It's not that hard, and uh, yeah. If you have any questions, uh, experiences, stories, that kind of stuff, um, questions again, leave them in the comments below. As always, I appreciate you watching. If you helped you out, hit that subscribe button. And uh, I'm not pushy about stuff, but it helped me out. So um, yeah, thanks for watching, and until next time, take her easy.